Today is Tuesday, June the 29th, 2004. We are here in the residence at Landbrook Square of General George Big Pen Duncan and Mrs. Duncan. And we are here to record a Veterans History interview. Mrs. Duncan, we're now looking at you, and we want both of you to speak up whenever you like. And my name is Frances Westbrook. I'm with the Atlanta History Center and have been helping with the Veterans History Project. And we're really grateful to you for all your service and all so for letting us come and hear about this today. So I'm going to turn the camera right on General Duncan, just like that. Now, General Duncan, would you please tell me again where you grew up? I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama. Yes. And how did you happen to go into the service? Well, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life anyway when I graduated from high school. So I went one year to Auburn. And then uh, I came back uh, home on a weekend visit. And when I went back to Montgomery, which I did frequently. And I, uh, uh, my father said, uh, I got a message from Lister Hill uh, this week. And uh, he said he had an apartment open to West Point. Do you want to go to West Point? And I said, give me some time to think about it. But after about uh, two minutes, I just said, yes, I'd like to go. I'd like to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. So uh, he didn't call this to Hill, and I went on up to the head of the military academy and uh, at West Point. And then for on, I did what everybody told me to do. And uh, it worked out very well for me because I was glad to do what they told me to do. Uh, otherwise, I would be in a lot of trouble. Yes. And uh, so uh, that began my uh, years of service in the United States Army, four years at West Point, and graduated in 32, and here I am listening to you question me. Yes, well, mm -hmm. there's so many things that we could ask and would like to know about. What was your first, uh, what was the first year at, at West Point like? Was it a lot different from Auburn? Is it like different from Auburn? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, there's no some similarity. <laughs> it was, uh, but it never bothered me. Mm -hmm. I had taken ROTC training uh, before in high school and one year at college. So uh, it was not new to me. And uh, some people got a little bit disturbed by being told what to do and do it quickly because mm -hmm. they never had been subject to that before. Uh, but it, I, yeah, I got along all right. I never got in any trouble, major trouble at West Point. Do and, you think the ROTC training was a, must have been point. a good preparation? It was. Very good preparation. Mm -hmm. Well, I did what they told me to do. Mm -hmm. That was the key to the whole thing. Yeah. It's the best way to stay out of trouble. Excellent. Well, what was your first uh, duty? You graduated in 1932 mm -hmm. as a second lieutenant, I believe, mm -hmm. commission. And then what did you do after West Point? Oh, I had seven years. But when I graduated, I went, I was assigned first to Fort McPherson out here. And uh, that was uh, in 1932. And I, that's where I met Latrell. She lived in Atlanta. And after four years or so, I, or less, I was so enamored with her that I uh, asked her to marry me. But she got a little bit uh, uh, reluctant about that. And, uh, and uh, but the main thing about that uh, obstacle we had was that I was in the Army. And therefore, if she was in the Army, she'd have to travel a long way from home. And she didn't want to leave home. And uh, so, but in a year, I had her persuaded. 
and I got orders to leave anyway, so I don't know what got her going, but uh, I went to Fort Benning and uh, took her with me. We got Wonderful. married, and I first Presbyterian church right here in town. Wonderful. That was Reverend Howell's church, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So many people remember Bill. him. Mm -hmm. I think his name was Bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Elizabeth Bloodworth. Yeah. Father. Mm -hmm. Father. Mm -hmm. So you did, in fact, live all over the world, didn't you? Just about. You really mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Now, before you began moving and living in different places, what about the years before World War II? And this, many of the veterans we talked to, of course, entered at age 18, so they mm -hmm. were much younger, but, but you were able I was to experience already, I had nine years service in the Army. Right. What was your sense of the build-up that World War II was looming, that, that things were well, I don't know exactly, but it was, I, my whole class was affected. Yes. So I, most of my friends are subject to the same uh, uh, duties I was. Right. And so they were called, they, they had the same problem I had, if I had any. But it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. They bothered me was leaving the trail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But uh, I, uh, I guess I went, then I went to, I went to Fort Benning, mm -hmm. went to the infantry school there, went to the 29th Infantry at Fort Benning. And uh, from there, I went to, well, I got married, for one thing. Then I went to, wasn't it Fort Dix, the trail? Yeah. Went to Fort Dix, New Jersey. And uh, the Army had a prep school there for, for soldiers who had appointments and who needed coaching for the entrance exam. And I was a, a, I had that responsibility. Uh, and stayed there, I think, was it two years? Two I think years. it was two years I spent there at uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey, uh, teaching school. And uh, that was a very pleasant job and not difficult with, with uh, young men who were so eager to get this over with and to pass that uh, examination. And uh, so with that I did for, I think, two years. Two years. And then I was ordered to Hawaii. Isn't that right? Yes. We were ordered to Hawaii. And we went over there in 1934, I guess. Am I speaking loud enough? I think you're doing real well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to... We went by boat. Yeah, from go all the way around through the Panama Canal. Now they don't send people like that. They put them on a boat. Plane. Or a plane, yeah. Now they were there. On the when I went over, I went on a boat. Yes. And uh, so that prolonged the trip, but it was really a sightseeing trip for us, rec recreational. Mm -hmm. And uh, to go from New York all the way around and end up in Honolulu, Hawaii. It took about three weeks. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. We went through the, the canal. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was out there two years. I see. In Hawaii. And uh, the war came. That was 19, I don't know where it was, 34, I think, or 35. 39. 39. Where were you? when Pearl Harbor was attacked? I was in, not in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I had, we had been there, and one month before Pearl Harbor was attacked, mm -hmm. I, uh, I returned to the United States. But there was certainly a very hostile attitude between ourselves and the uh, Germans. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it seemed that war was imminent, and we had already started to draft, so I didn't know what was going to happen next. And so I went to, uh, where was I went to, I was that to 
Fort Bragg first. You were at Fort Benning. Fort Benning. At school. I was in Fort Again. Benning at the Everett School when that happened. And um, I stayed there until the course ended. Then I went to the West Coast to try. Fort Ord. Fort Ord, California. And uh, stayed there for less than a year. Wasn't there? Where did I go? And they, and they sent us up to up to Northern California mm -hmm. to to the little town. Yeah, Fort Ord. Though. Yeah, Fort Ord. Fort Ord, California. And they were guarding. They were guarding. Uh, what were you guarding up at Fort Bragg? Fort. No, Port. you were guarding something else. At well, anyway. Well, do you remember exactly where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Nineteen. Hearing the news, though, yeah. like how you heard. We had the radio on. Mm -hmm. in, in oh, I, we were visiting her parents mm -hmm. in McDonough, Georgia, and uh, we heard it on a Sunday afternoon. Really? Yes, that's when the word got out over the radio, and uh, that that Pearl Harbor had been attacked. Mm -hmm. And. Then I went back to Fort Benning where I was in school. But I went with him. She went and with I him. said, I'm going even if I have to sleep on the park bench. And because I didn't have any place to stay, and I went down there with him. But fortunately, we were we belonged to the Presbyterian Church down there. We had we had joined the church when we got down there and First Presbyterian in Columbus. In Columbus. And so we called us a friend that we had known at church and asked them if they would take us in and they said yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. So you continued on, on there. Well, till the course was finished. Mm -hmm. Yes, till the course was finished. Mm -hmm. And then I got orders to I forgot where. You were, well, you ordered, ordered to come back to Fort Ord. Mm -hmm. And then from Fort Ord, they sent you up to Willits, California. Willits, California, that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there. You got in the, the. A port. The coast. Yeah, the something. port. I had to, on the sea coast there, where they were. Uh, shipping some very uh, imported cargo, and so they had a, they kept an infantry regiment out at uh, uh, nearby, mm -hmm. and I stayed there for how long? Did you, know? you remember? Not very long. They sent you. They promoted you and sent you back to start a new division. At Fort Ord. That's right. I went to Fort Ord, California, and was part of the cadre of a new division they were forming. And uh, it, I don't know where I went next. You, you went. You went to. Uh, back to Fort Benning. Wasn't no, it? no. You then you went. You went to Baltimore. What fort? What fort is it? Baltimore. Meet. Fort Meade. Fort Meade. And uh, another division in Fort Meade. And uh, stayed there for a while. If that, the Army was in a turmoil there. New units were being formed. And uh, they had to find the cadre for the new divisions. And the cadre, they had some experience. So I fitted very well into that, because I'd already had several years in the Army. Much of it training soldiers, and so I went from uh, went over to the fort. Uh, not fort. We were already fort. Oh, fort Meade, mm -hmm. wow. Fort Meade, Maryland. And uh, then uh, you yeah, went to Hattiesburg, didn't you? From there, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a new division formed out there. That was the 65th. 65th division. And I went as a cadre to the 65th Division at, at uh, From there you went overseas. Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute. You did? I know I went as a cadre to that division, but where was that cadre? 
the cat was in Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mississippi. I didn't mention that. Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And from there, the whole division went overseas. I see. And then from there, we, we went overseas uh, as a division to trade together. And uh, we went to war. Where did you go first when you were overseas? I went to directly to Honolulu to the Fort. I've forgotten what. The no, name. you didn't go to Honolulu. You went to General Patton. When you got to to Europe, you went to General Patton's Third Army. I went to the Third Army. Yeah, General Patton. You said all the soldiers were after the war were always proud that they had been with General Patton. Yes. Yes, but... Uh, now, didn't you have an experience with General Patton's little dog? Yes. <laughs> who, would, who have you been listening to? <laughs> Tell her about Willie. Check me out. <laughs> yeah. We'd love well, uh, to hear that. Uh, well, anyway, I went to uh, Fort Ord. Was it Fort Ord? No, you went to Hattiesburg. I went to Hattiesburg, And then you went over to, Then you went to... Over to England, and then you went. You joined General Patton. Yeah. So uh, that's that. Did you write that down? I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I went to England, and then uh, I joined the division. Uh, the Third Army. The Third Army, which was already in in the fighting. And uh, that was General Patton's mm -hmm. army. And I uh, uh, stayed with them for the entire, for the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, I've forgotten where I was when the surrender came, but I was very glad to have a surrender. Uh, you were on the Inns River. I was in, on the Inns River, that's right. We were Austria. face to face with the Germans uh, on the, in River, they were on the uh, eastern side. We were on the western side of the End River, and uh, but the fighting had pretty well ceased. Everybody was just a feeling that the war was going to end soon, so uh, no one wanted to be the last person killed, and uh, so everybody was very cautious. Well, it was true on the other side too. We was pretty quiet there. And then the war was, uh, uh, armistice came, and then the war was over. And I stayed over there, though, uh, and uh, didn't get home till all oh, fall, the fall of the year, I went back. And uh, I think it was because that I had had only six months over there, and people who had had longer than that went ahead of me, which was only right, and I couldn't argue about that. But I did get home in December, about December, and uh, stayed there on 30 days leave. And then you didn't go back with me, did you? No, I no. couldn't go back. Then I went back to— But that's when you took—that's when you met Willie. Oh, yes. When you were yes. coming home that, I, uh, that time. You, you went on the train to— you, you got a big uh, leave, and you were going to Paris for leave, and you got, got on the train, and you saw Willie sitting there on the seat. Yeah. Tell us about that. Willie was uh, General Patton's dog, and he got first-class treatment. And I uh, got on board the train, I think, going from Paris. Going the other to way. Paris. Hmm? Going to Paris. Going to Paris. And from Vienna. From Vienna. And uh, I, uh, in, in Paris, we were, and the dog, he had, I saw, when I got on board the train, there was a dog sitting on the uh, seat opposite me with the uh, captain. And the captain had, I'd been with him in another unit. And uh, we greeted each other warmly and uh, sat down in the same compartment and talked about where we'd been and where we were going. He said, well, now, I'm going to stay at the uh, George Sank Hotel in Paris. 
and there's enough room in there for you and that dog. And uh, this dog, he had the dog. It was General Patton's dog. General Patton had died of pneumonia. And uh, on his way back to the state, and he had died, and he left his dog to be sent home to his wife. And his, uh, uh, the, his aide was taking the dog back. And the uh, dog was a, what kind of dog was that? Dog? He was a bull, an English bull, bull terrier. terrier. He was an English bull terrier. Beautiful dog. But he was he didn't have any courage. <laughs> he was a pet dog. And he was a very nice dog. So anyway, so much for the dog. We took him back uh, to Paris and stayed at oh, George, George Sank. Sank. George Sank Hotel, which with is a dog. with the dog. They didn't complain. Yeah. And so we had the dog there. And uh, for several days, waiting for transportation back to the United States, which uh, developed in a few days. And I came on home and had a month's leave. And uh, my friend, uh, was, uh, who was aide to General Patton, went back to, uh, he took the dog back to, to uh, the west coast where General Patton's wife was. And uh, we partied company. I haven't seen him since, but it was a nice little vacation we had in Paris with the dog. Yes. And uh, nice dog. so uh, I went from there to Atlanta. And uh, where the trail was, she was staying with her mother down at, at uh, McDonald. And I stayed, I think I had a month's leave. And uh, how did it develop the trail from there? You yeah. had to go back. You had to go back. I had to go back to Europe. And I, I could go over, I got to go over on the, on the third boatload of wives that, that they let go over. Mm -hmm. And he, I joined him in Vienna. And he had, he had bought a dog and had hired a cook who did not speak a word of English. <laughs> and so we, so I had to learn German so I could talk to the dog <laughs> that, that he had a, well, he met me. He had a captured German Ford at, uh, convertible. And the, and the dog was sitting in the, on the back seat and his head was about one inch from the, awesome. from the canvas top. <laughs> I thought it was the biggest dog I'd ever seen in my entire life, but I fell in love with him. He was Bonzo. And so, because when we came back from Europe, we brought him back with us, and he lived a rich, rich old life. He lived to be 16, and he, he, he got the best treatment. <laughs> Is that his picture right there, it's that sketch? No, his picture's in the other, on my bureau. Mm -hmm. I have a photograph of it. Now, was this in Vienna? That was in Vienna. Mm -hmm. George was in Vienna, so stationed in Vienna. Love being, I was thinking you could try to take a picture of these wonderful portraits. Because tell me, talk while I do that. You told me they were done in Vienna. In Vienna, while we were stationed there. Mm -hmm. And we loved Vienna. Let's see if we can get these well, the camera, because they're very lovely. They were by a Viennese artist. Mm -hmm. And he was very good. Well, he was. I looked like that. Hair and all. It was. We have, actually, we have an interesting picture in the background because this gentleman here is reflected. Oh, really? That was it's my great great, great grandfather. Really? Mm -hmm. And was he over down to? No, he lived in Macon. And now we have a gentleman's portrait. He's an excellent woman. Very. Will they show up that way? I think we'll have something, and I'm mm -hmm. going to be perfect, but they'll give us a record, I think. They're just such beautiful things. They are. Well, it did want to try mm -hmm. to improve. That man got a good likeness. Who painted them. Yeah, so that was Vienna. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you loved Berlin so much, too. Well, we that did. As a matter of fact, later. the trail liked it better than
And that was after the war, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was in 50, 56 to 58 we were in. So what was, but that, is that what was called the Cold War period? The, that was the Cold War. How did it feel to be the of it then? Yeah. Well, the 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 Russians were, you know, they, we we met them at parties, and they would have they would invite us as a group, you know, to come to a big party, and we would invite them to a group, as a group like to the Fourth of July, the big reception or something, and then some people invited individual Russians, so we met some individual Russians at different individual parties, but but they had. Uh, this was just about the time that the Russian uh, plane went, went up, you know, the, that, 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 yeah, and, uh, and so they were very proud of that. Oh, yeah, they'd greet us at parties, tell them about the U-2. <laughs> but they, uh, but we, one, one Russian at one cocktail party, Russian general I met, and I said, oh, I'm reading, uh, what was I reading that I told him about? I said, War and Peace. Buddy. War and Peace. And he said, and he said, oh, I, he was just so interested. And then he said, I said, well, I've just gotten to where, where Bonaparte has got, got gotten into wherever he went. And Russia. he said, he said, well, you go back and read it till he gets out. <laughs> so. Then after Berlin, what came next? We went to Washington. And and all of the Russians used to say, Oh, I can't wait to get back to to Moscow. Moscow. Mm -hmm. And of course they were lying because it, Moscow was that their life in Moscow was nothing compared with the life in in Berlin. And so then when we got our orders I said, I can't wait to get back to Washington which was well, I was really lying. <laughs> <laughs> I, and so that's the difference between life in Berlin and life in, in Washington. Yes. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, I would like to ask, I don't know, I don't want to skip anything too much, but I did notice that I think that the conclusion in 1966 to 67, you were... Uh, 65, I think. 65. Mm -hmm. well, I retired. You were tied in what, 67? 67. 67. So you were with the 3rd Army General Headquarters. Mm-hmm, that's right. I was right, right here, wasn't it? Yeah. I was right here for my first. And then you retired. <laughs> then I went out to uh, Yerkes Primate Research Center mm -hmm. for 10 years. So after retirement, where did you go? The Yerkes Primate Center? Yerkes Primate Research. And would you like to tell us about that? Well, that was right here in, uh, at Emory University, mm -hmm. on the property of Emory University. There's a research center mm -hmm. there. Have you heard of it? Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, well, then it was I was wonderful. explain that to you. I went there as the administrative officer. Mm -hmm. I'm no scientist. I do know a little thing. Uh, I keep in order and some discipline among the people. Mm -hmm. and that was really a, ple present, a pleasant uh, assignment. Mm -hmm. I, I liked the people, very friendly, mm -hmm. and they were all uh, honest with each other mm -hmm. and with me. Mm -hmm. And it was just a very pleasant assignment. I stayed there for how long? Ten years? Twelve. I think twelve, yeah. 1967. Mm -hmm. I think 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. And it was, I enjoyed it very much. Well, they've done some great things. Mm -hmm. Very important research. Mm -hmm. The scientists out there were too very, they were also, we took upon scientists as being peculiar people in some ways. And they, they, they had a few peculiarities. In general, they were very nice to be to work with. I enjoyed the association and enjoyed the work. And I'm sorry I, I got the, the age limit on me and I had to leave. 
He said his first rule out there was no monkey may write his congressman. <laughs> well, we had faculty right. members over that would write their congressman. <laughs> well, one or two. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, soldiers wrote their congressman. That's mm -hmm. what used to get me. Mm -hmm. And soldiers would write their congressman when they felt mistreated. Mm -hmm. And you had to, their commanders had to get out and write a letter back to the congressman. Yeah explain what had happened and all that, and that was, uh, uh, made the job unpleasant when mm -hmm. that happened, but one of those things we expected, some mm -hmm. of them will complain. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have that among those uh, apes and monkeys. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, I'd like to ask, what were, looking back on your military career, what were some of the stand-out experiences that you might remember? You've had so well, many. Well, the first place I had a long service in the Army before I graduated in 1932, and mm -hmm. I think in 41 is when uh, uh, I was assigned to that division, mm -hmm. that division. I think, I don't know, mm -hmm. I can't remember kind of things now. But anyway, I I was with the, in training, this mm -hmm. division, in training, ready to go overseas, east or west. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think everybody knew we were going to Europe. And that's where we went from. Mm -hmm. So, Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Hattiesburg Mississippi. Mm -hmm. and that's where our camp was. Mm -hmm. That's where we trained, uh, I guess, a year. To Europe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, anything you want to add to that, Trail? No. <coughs> so you were glad you got in General Patton's army. Yeah. Yes, I did. I got in the Third Army at General Patton, and he was a he was a man who was a hard hard uh, leader, stern as a hard to please, but it, it helped if you pleased him, you, do, you, you, know, you were doing all right. But anyway, it was General Patton. Uh, but uh, the war ended while I was over there. And I'm trying to remember what the time element was when General Patton died in the hospital. Had a heart attack, something, and died over there. So um, we were in Germany mm -hmm. at that time. The division was, the trail wasn't there. Mm -hmm. We uh, the division stayed there. I gotta go from there to trail. Well, you, you came, you got out, and you came home. But I had to go back. Yeah, but you you were in the Army of Occupation. Well, yes, I know. I was already in the Army of Occupation. Yeah. When we quit occupation, it was long after I left. Yeah, well, you came back to, you mean, what, where you were assigned? Yeah, where did we go? I don't remember. Well, we can look on your, um, I think we have a list of stations. your stations. So we can we can fill in the blanks on okay. that. So oh, I know where we went. We went to Washington. Because remember, I told everybody, I told those Russians, I can't wait to get back to to Washington, and I hated it. <laughs> that I I didn't. The I meant, there was such a difference in, in the life yes. of life of in Washington, life in mm -hmm. Berlin, mm -hmm. because I enjoyed being in the in the near Washington. Yes. But I just didn't like the hardships. Yes. <laughs> Well, were there other uh, personalities in a sense of people like Patton that you particularly remember in any phase? 
Oh, yes, I may remember a lot, but don't depend on my weak memory because I did have a lot of friends. The man who brought General Patton's dog back was yes. a friend of mine, but I've forgotten his name. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been many a year since this has happened. Yes. So uh, well, what I, have, about I have, don't have a good recall. Well, I think you are, have recall extremely well for all this long career and all these many different things that happened. What about Eisenhower? Um, well, General Eisenhower was, uh, I think he'd come back home. Mm -hmm. And somebody else had taken his position, but I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't see him that often. Mm -hmm. uh, not very close to him either. Mm -hmm. yeah. But being in Patton's army was a Oh, it was something. All the soldiers, you may have said, the soldiers that had gotten out of the army, mm -hmm. people that asked them where they served, they said, I served under General Patton, mm -hmm. you know, with the 3rd U.S. Army. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they were proud of being part of Patton's group. Mm -hmm. Because Patton was a hard driver, but nevertheless, he greatly respected. Mm -hmm. By, by his, the people he commanded, mm -hmm. and deserved this so. He was a real soldier. Mm -hmm. But now, where are we? Well, we've come all the way up through your retirement and being at Yerkes Primate Center, mm -hmm. and then now being here at Glenbrook and retiring. Yeah. Um, if I could ask one or two more questions, going way, way, way back. Yes. Even in elementary school, I started wondering: Do you remember specific teachers? Who it was Daisy Neal. What? Tell us about. First grade. Ms. Well, I'd love to hear about Miss Daisy Neal. Well, she was a well-known character in Thomasville, mm -hmm. Georgia, in the public school, and taught the um, first to second grade, and I was in it. She was loved by all, mm -hmm. but she was an abandoned teacher, mm -hmm. too. And uh, anybody who had her for a teacher, he, he or she always said, I was in Miss Daisy Neal's class. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the general pattern of the first grade, that's the right. The general <laughs> pattern of the first grade, that's right. Yes, it was. And, uh, that was down in Thomasville, too. Mm -hmm. Any other teachers along the way who made such an impression? No. In high school? Or? Oh, there was one we had named Birdie Birdsong. <laughs> that was in Thomasville, too. Mm -hmm. And she had another, she had the next class up above Miss mm -hmm. Daisy. But she was a good teacher, mm -hmm. and I remembered her. Mm -hmm. You can attest to that. Yes, indeed. I, so I must have been impressed. Definitely. But Miss Daisy Neal, anybody that had been in the, in the first grade, I remember Miss Daisy Neal, mm -hmm. was very proud of her. Mm -hmm. She was the demanding person, mm -hmm. but one who did it without beating you over the head. Okay. Where are we now? Well, is there anything else you would like <laughs> to add? I think we've covered a lot, but any everything. experiences you'd like to particularly mention or anything you'd like to say? Well, for I the just want to say that I also went on to high school right. <laughs> in Montgomery, Alabama. I see. And then uh, from high school I got a department to West Point. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, congressman and now He's dead now. Lister Hill appointed me to, to West Point. I think I mentioned that. You did, I think. Mm -hmm. One thing that Lister Hill and his wife came to Berlin on a trip while we were there. And so we and we invited him to dinner and they had dinner with us. And he, he said, I, I know how to pick them. <laughs> well, yeah, I bet he did. I was a general officer. Yes, then. indeed. <laughs> You were definitely to his credit. <laughs> <laughs> so would either of you like to say something for future generations about service or 
Uh, well, I think those who did best were those who liked uh, liked the military service, mm -hmm. liked the discipline required, mm -hmm. and uh, also they were confident that they were in something valuable when they got in the army. service to the country anyway. Yes. Well, thank you so very much. If there's anything you would like to add, we can do that. Well, let me see. I did have some, well, the Korean War. I was in the Korean War. Oh, please tell us some about, about those experiences. I would have been in the, I would have been in the, Vietnam. Vietnam. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't. I was back there training troops to go to Vietnam. Yes. But then after that, it was in Korea. Would you like to talk some about the Korean War experience? Yes, it was. Uh, I was the regimental commander, mm -hmm. infantry regiment, in the Korean War. And it was a demanding war. But worst of the fighting, I think, had gone on before I got there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had enough to suit me. Yes. But uh, the, the Army and the United States were having a hard time in Korea mm -hmm. from the beginning. But they finally got control of the situation mm -hmm. and the war ended, as you know. We successfully defended South Korea, which mm -hmm. was our purpose in fighting that war in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was with them at the type time they were face to face with the uh, Chinese mm -hmm. who were up in North Korea. And the North Koreans had their troops too. But, uh, That was an interesting service, but we were we were handicapped in that service because uh, the uh, the, Kore the North Koreans were fighting against brothers mm -hmm. at South Korea and North mm -hmm. Korea, mm -hmm. and that made it difficult for them and somewhat difficult for. Miss Vietnam. I'm glad you did. I'm <laughs> glad you did. <laughs> I have read that a lot of Korean veterans feel almost overlooked. Well, they did. We never declared war. Yeah. Oh, I commanded an infantry regiment, and they were fighting a war that had never been declared. Mm. I lost men killed mm. who were uh, fighting a war that had never been mm -hmm. declared and hasn't yet been declared. Mm -hmm. I sort of resented that. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't affect the way we did our job, but I got in with something that the country should have done. Mm -hmm. Cause it, it made the soldiers in it feel like they weren't really appreciated and, mm -hmm. and were not doing anything to help the country because mm -hmm. the country didn't feel like even declaring war. Mm -hmm. George wrote me in one letter that he had he had gone up to see Charlie Diosa, who was a classmate of his, mm -hmm. and and uh, he had, and he was a George had a a, a a company right on the front line, and so mm -hmm. did Charlie. And so I wrote George back and I said, please don't go up to see Charlie anymore because that's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. And George said he laughed and laughed when he got the letter because he wrote me back and said everything we do over here is dangerous. <laughs> Definitely. But they could, they were so close they could see the enemy. Wow. We had an interview the other day with a Korean veteran. Mm -hmm. And 
this was an African American veteran. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that across the front lines they were broadcasting, you know, propaganda. Mm -hmm. Why are you here? Yeah. I thought that was very interesting. Well, but he can. kept with it. Well, then you were talking about because I heard you tell you. Yeah, I want to thank you for reminding me because it was one of the humorous things that happened. Not many things happened during the war, but uh, I was the operations officer of an infantry division in World War II, and uh, we got up around the Florida River uh, in Germany, and. Uh, Germans were defending their territory real well. And we And he came and he, came, was up, he came up to you. It was midnight oh. on the Fort River and, <laughs> and he came up bobbed him up to you. And said, Well, it came up to uh, to in the middle of the night. A little fight was going on then, but this man was a liaison officer between us and my division and the division next to us. And he came over to us and reported that he was the liaison officer and he was going to be right nearby if I had anything that uh, would help. And uh, he should help him. Let him know and he'd take it back to his division commander. But that's fine. And, uh, but as he talked, he had a southern accent. And I said, uh, where are you from? He said, I'm from Georgia. And I said, uh, where'd you go to school? He said, I went to the University of Georgia. I said, my wife went to the University of Georgia. He said, what was her name? And the name was Latrell Robinson. He said, I knew her. <laughs> I never saw him anymore, but that was just a coincidence that mm -hmm. I should see. But you knew his nickname. Oh, it is. I said, because I forgot about that. As, while, while he was talking, I said, if you were, uh, where are you from? He said, Georgia. So where'd you go to school? University of Georgia. And I said, uh, did you? Did you know my wife was trail? No, you didn't. He said, is your nickname. I haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> he said, I said, uh, what is your, have you got a nickname? What, what is your name? And he said, uh, what, what did he say? He just said Bob Snelly. Hmm? Bob Snelly. Snelly. My name is Snelly. And uh, he said, uh, I'm up here as a liaison officer from the unit up ahead, and uh, I'll be right nearby. So I said, as he talked, I knew he was from somewhere in his house. I said, where are you from? He said, from, I'm from Georgia. I said, did you go to the University of Georgia? He said, yes, I did. I said, my wife went to the university. And uh, he said, what was her name? I said, the, the, the trail Robertson. He said, I knew her. <laughs> That's great. And, uh, so that was a coincidence. Amazing. His nickname was the thing. His nickname was Yard Dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And George said, is your name nickname Yard Dog? And he was, he almost fainted. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it worked out, yeah. Yeah. While he was standing there, mm -hmm. I uh, recognized that southern voice of his. Because mm -hmm. you had heard his nickname. Yeah, I, I had heard that, yeah. But you were probably the only person over there who knew yeah. what his nickname was. <laughs> <laughs> and I, oh, and he said, great. you don't even yard dog. He said, how did you know? <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, there's so many memories and stories, mm -hmm. don't you? You were right. Yes. So I thought that was particularly fun to hear in the middle of the night on yes, the photo yes. River George is asking, is your, is your nickname yard dog? I love that. That probably made him feel back at home for a few years. Yes, it brought back memories, I'm sure. I'm sure it did.
Well, thank you so much. Well, this is extremely interesting. Anything it did, else? It did last here a long time, I think. Yes. Anything else you want to say? I think he said it. I'll say it enough. Okay. Well, we'd love to hear more anytime. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to catch up on my thoughts. Where was it? We, we had uh, crossed the river, and uh, the division had it gone on ahead. And I, uh, I was behind them and crossed over the river on the bridge that we'd been built. And then uh, he had that. You saw some movement. Oh, I bridge. saw some. I, I was by myself except for a driver. And uh, I, uh, I, the, uh, the driver said there's somebody behind the bush right up there. And so I looked and I couldn't see the bush shaking and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I said, just drive a little bit closer. Well, he did. And when he did, uh, this German uh, soldier came out from behind a brush. And uh, he came up holding his hands up like that. And I can't remember the conversation, but at any rate, he, it was by sign language, mostly. Mm -hmm. But I told him to get in the, uh, get in the back of the jeep, and uh, so he got in the back of the jeep, and we went on up, and I joined the, uh, the uh, regiment I was in, the division I was in, and uh, he. And your friends were standing. Oh, there. oh yes, my friends were standing as I drove up to the command post. There were a bunch of my friends who had already gone ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, uh, who is that you've got in the back seat? And uh, before I could answer, somebody there said, why, he's a German. And you captured the, the uh, part of the German army. <laughs> and I couldn't. I could, they teased me by bringing that kid. He was only 14 years old. <laughs> so they teased me about bringing in a 14 year old and he broke the back of the German army. <laughs> but uh, so much, I think of a lot of other things, but you've got as much tape as you can handle. Just hold it like that, like yeah. you're holding it up, and we'll at least get a picture of one thing. That's wonderful. Now, um, do you want to tell me just briefly about that one? Have you taken the picture? Yes. Well, this is just a, 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 my commanding general. Can you hold it? March 1966, mm -hmm. uh, Fort Monroe. He, uh, I think it's just prior to my retirement. Mm -hmm. No, you retired from Fort McPherson. You ain't gotten to Fort McPherson yet. Well, anyway, just for four mm -hmm. I retired about a year before. And it's just a uh, presentation of a, of a uh, medal. It says, in recognition of the outstanding contribution you have made during your tenure as Chief of Staff and as Assistant Deputy Commander General for reserve forces and in other key positions at headquarters United States Continental Army Command. We, the undersigned, offer this token of respect, admiration, and esteem. May the future hold many fruitful years of achievement and happiness uh, so richly merited by your entry, your retiring, Devotion to duty, untiring. Mm -hmm. Devotion to duty. I'm glad it wasn't re retiring. It wasn't well, it was a very short uh, very long before I did retire. No, it was well, respectable. Well, I mean, I could yeah. Paul Freeman. Yeah. He commanded me at Fort McPherson. No, he, he commanded at Fort Monroe. Okay. Well,